الله الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار الله الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this program of uh, the beautiful names of Allah we are going to speak about Al-Mu'min Guardian of Faith One of the attributes of Allah mentioned in the ayah of Surah Al-Hashr هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المؤمن المهيمن إن شاء الله we will take first المؤمن and then المهيمن المؤمن الله سبحانه وتعالى is the first one to declare the witness or testimony that he is one and this is what is recorded in this ayah شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وأولو العلم قائما بالقسط لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم الله is witnessing that there is none to be worshipped except him he is witnessing it والملائكة and the angels وأولو العلم and the people of the knowledge قائما بالقسط and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stands with the justice. La ilaha illa huwa al-aziz al-hakim. There is none to be worshipped except Allah. He is dominant. He is wise. Now here, al-mu'min, the one who guards the faith, are the one who gives al-amn, the peace. And we have known from the word as-salam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of the peace. In the very same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives aman, peace and security that could be understood from this word as well, al-mu'min. Same way he has given you the faith, al-iman, similarly he is the one who gives you the peace and the security. And another meaning of this al-mu'min is that he responds to the prayers and supplications of the believers. This we understand from this ayah. وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِي فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ When they ask my people, when my people ask, about me, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them that I am very near, very near to them. And then, so let them have faith in me. And let them turn back to me so that they can be guided. So, so, so the word which is used here, wal yu'minu bi, ay, iza amanu bi, amantu lahum. If uh, they have faith in me, I am going to respond to them. That is the difference between Amanu bi and Amanu lahu. They have faith in me and I am going to respond to them. So that is uh, a second meaning. The third meaning of that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I have just said, gives them peace and security from all types of fears. First of all, he brings that peace in their, in their heart and a, a tranquility is showered upon them in this life. A person who got Iman, who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is not going to be uh, easily frightened from uh, any imminent fear which he comes across. Because he believes in Allah, he believes in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, in the very same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to save them from the frightening 
of the last day, which is known as al fazaul Akbar, the day of uh, al Qiyamah, the resurrection day, when, of course, the people would be would be in a great uh, difficulty and uh, they would be just looking for the questioning when it is going to start. They would be running from here to there, running from one prophet to the other prophet, asking each, let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start the questioning. So uh, the misery and uh, the difficulty which they are facing could come to an end. Allah is going to save the believers on that day as well. Now also, let us take uh, the, the impression of that attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as far as the believers are concerned. A, a believer who believes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of peace, that person not only uh, is peaceful, he also provides peace to the others as well. In one of the hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Al-Mu'min man aminahu nas ala dimaihim wa amwalihim." Who is the believer? Who is the believer? Believer is that person. Other people are saved from his, uh, you know, from his interference in their property and in their souls, that he does not come to hurt them let alone to kill them. Now let us uh, now move to the next attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Al-Muhaymin, the protector. And we have read the ayah of Surah Al-Hashr in the beginning, uh, which also includes Al-Muhaymin. So what does it mean? It means that he is above all his creatures by looking at them, by watching them, by protecting them. And this word without uh, this definite article Alif Lam is also used for Al-Quran, for the book. For example, in the ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ And we have revealed to thee this book with truth, verifying whatever it is there in front of that book, and out of the old scriptures, وَمُحَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ And as a watch tower upon them. So here the word مُحَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ means this book Al-Quran is above the other scriptures. If there were any, if there were mistakes in those books, alteration and changes for example, this Quran is going to tell about these changes. For example, just take a very simple example that uh, Bible has mentioned that uh, God has created the whole universe in six days and on the seventh day he rested. Now Quran also speaks about the same phenomenon that Allah SWT has created the whole universe in six days. But in Surah Qaf, it is added after this uh, statement that he created the heavens and the earth in six days. He said, وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِن لغوب, And no fatigue touched us. And there was no need for, for God to take rest because God is not like ordinary people. He does not uh, need a holiday. So this is why this word وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِن لغوب, is added. In the very same way, the idea of Trinity which uh, has been uh, crept into the old scriptures. For example, Quran has refuted it by saying, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ Why Quran has said that he did not beget, nor was he begotten, only to refute that idea which was introduced to the previous scriptures. The word al muhaymin also uh, Use, uh, is used also as a testimony, as a witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a witness, is a shahid upon everything. He sees them and there is nothing which can, which can miss him. And another meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking care of everything and he is the one who manages all the affairs of this world. It also means Al-Hafiz Al-Ladhi La Yansa. 
the person who preserves who protects and nothing is forgotten nothing is wasted allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counts everything any person who has done even an atom weight of good he is going to see it on the day of judgment any person who has done an atom weight of evil he is going to see it on the day of judgment so nobody should think that oh uh, as a poor person i have just given a penny in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, how i am going to be rewarded for that no don't think in these terms allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muhaimin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows whatever you have spent even if it was a very tiny amount and in the same way it also means that he is trustworthy he is al amin and nothing is wasted from him whatever you have deposited with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as good actions are there you will see them you will see them on the day of judgment and as a muslim uh, what impression you got from uh, this attribute of allah al muhaimin in your life that is very clear we have said in previous episodes that from each attribute you understand something for yourself if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rahim he is merciful then try to develop that mercy mercy in yourself as well be merciful to the people don't be hard upon them be kindful to them in the very same way the word muhaimin it implies that if you are given a task a duty a status a position then try to use that position and status in the society at that job to protect the rights of the people and uh, if uh, there are those rights which you have to give them then you have to give them these rights don't exploit your position your position to do injustice to the people and that is a great problem which uh, the people face whenever a person comes to a very important position in the community in the society may he be a councillor or he be a, a governor or even a chairman of a society or uh, the the chairman of uh, a body let alone if he is a prime minister or a president people try to exploit their position no that does not uh, befit you try to try to understand that as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muhaimin if he has given you this haimana in this type of control upon other people then be nice to them be fair to them try to be uh, humble towards them and don't show any arrogance towards them and with this we come to the end of uh, uh, this uh, episode and inshallah we are going to continue after the break wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh الله الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Before the break, uh, we were speaking about the two attributes of Allah, al-Mu'min and al-Muhaimin. Now, we have to speak about al-Aziz and later about al-Jabbar. The word al-Aziz, which is translated commonly in English as uh, the mighty, the unconquerable, in Arabic. if we try to find out uh, its uh, roots we can go back 
to three roots. And again, that is the beauty of Arabic language, that for one word, you can have different explanation because uh, of the difference of the root words. Now, in Arabic, either it is from Azza, Ya Izzu. Look at uh, uh, the second word, which is Ya Izzu, the present tense, with a kasra under Ain, Azza, Ya Izzu. Azizan, it means that there is nothing similar to him. La mithla lahu, wa la nidda, wa la nadhir. So when we say al-aziz, we mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who got none similar unto him. That would be the first meaning. Now the second meaning, it is from azza ya'uzzu. There is a dhammah an ayn. Azza ya'uzzu azizan which means al-ghalib alladhi la yughlam the person who is dominant and who can't be defeated at all and uh, this is uh, what is used in the ayah of surah sad wa azzani fil khitam that the other person dominated me in speech so this is uh, the same same meaning azza ya uzzu and also they say man azza bazza that the person who is dominant, he is going to take away what he likes. Now the third varia uh, variation is Azza Ya'azzu. There is a Fatha upon Ayn, which means Al-Shadeed, Al-Qawi, Al-Mumtani' Biquwatihi and Sa'iri Khalqi. That person who is very, very strong, and uh, he got such a strength that uh, nobody Nobody can, can defeat him. And this is uh, what is the meaning in this ayah. In yasha yudhibkum wa ya'ti bi khalqin jadeed wa ma zalika ala Allahi bi aziz. If he wanted, he could have taken you away. And he could have brought some people other than you. And this is something which is not aziz upon Allah, in which is not uh, impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Azza Ya'azzu, it is coming from, from strength. And in Surah Yasin, where the story of uh, uh, that village is given, where two messengers were sent, and then the three messengers was sent as well, for Azazna bi thalisin, and we have uh, strengthened them with the third messengers. So as far as uh, uh, these three root words are concerned, we come to know about three different meanings. The first one, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got none similar unto him. The second one, that he is al-ghalib, that he is the dominant. And the third one, that he is strong. All the strength comes from him. And that is the meaning that uh, we can say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of izzah of honor, of strength and power. And as far as us, as human beings, as Muslims, we should always think that the honor could come only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what is said in the ayah of Surah Fatir, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعِزَّةَ فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا If any person is looking for, for the honor, for the strength, know that to Allah belongs all the honor, all the strength. It means that then turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is going to give you that honor. In the end of uh, Surah Safat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord is glorified. He is the Rabb of honor, a Rabb of power, Rabb of dignity. Rabbul Izzati Amma Yasifun. And what the people describe him are associated with him. He is free from that all. And peace be upon all the messengers. And be, praise be to Allah who is Rabbul Alameen, who is the creator of all the worlds. So, this is very clear. And this Izza or dignity and power, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to those who follow the, the faith uh, of Islam, 
This is why it is said, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And to Allah belongs that dignity and honor, and it belongs to His Messenger, and it belongs to the believers, but the hypocrites, al-munafiqun, do not realize it. That was uh, a certain uh, incident which happened during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That one hypocrite, actually the leaders of the hypocrites, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, he said uh, that when we come to al-Madina, the one who got honor means al-Aziz. He is going to expel from al-Madina one who got no honor at all. So he's, he used these words, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has refuted his claim by saying that the real honor and dignity lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the messenger, and with the believers. And uh, we also remember the saying of Sayyidina Umar when he came to Baytul Maqdis, when Baytul Maqdis was conquered by the Muslims during the time of Sayyidina Umar. Sayyidina Umar came and uh, Abu Ubaidah expected uh, from him to be in a very good attire because he is going to meet the great nobles of Baytul Maqdis from among uh, Christians. So he was expecting good attire. And when Sayyidina Umar knew about that, he said these words to Abu Ubaidah and the other commanders that إن الله أعزنا بالإسلام ومهما ابتغينا العزة في غيره ذلنا الله تعالى. Listen that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has given us honor with Islam and if we seek that honor in any other thing, Allah is going to humiliate us and that is the real position of the Muslim as long as we seek that honor with Allah. We will have it, but if we seek we seek it with someone else in the east or in the west, then nothing could be coming to us except humiliation and disgrace. Now let us move to the next uh, attribute of Allah, which is Al Jabbar, the Compeller, who repairs all broken things, who completes what is incomplete. Because the word al-Jabbar, which is coming from Jabara, which means to, to repair. And uh, if you know, a, a bone, a bone is, is broken and, and someone repairs it, it is known as al-Jabar. So what is the meaning of al-Jabbar then? We can say the greatest person, more you think about him, more you wonder about him. Because our minds can't absorb his greatness at all. And we can also say that Al-Jabbar means the one who repairs, who amends the affairs of his creation. If a person got any, any, uh, any type of, of trouble or adversity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can repair it or who can change his position from uh, that difficulty to a peace and relief. And it also means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Jabbar, means to enforce the people upon His will. Any what He wanted, that is going to happen in this universe. Can you imagine that something could happen in this universe without His will? No, nothing could happen. But we should also remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got a way, a sunnah in each and everything. So he is not going to go against his sunnah. Though he has enforced his will everywhere, but you will find that his will is associated with hikmah, with wisdom. Now what we understand from this attribute for ourselves, we should understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is jabbar. He got al Jabarut, he got the greatness. So it is not befitting for us to claim that greatness for us. And this is why uh, this word is used in the Quran 
as far as the human beings are concerned, for those tyrant rulers who wanted to persecute the people and force them to do what they should not, uh, they should not do. They forced them to be obedient to them without, without their will. So, Jabbar for a human being would, uh, would mean that the person got an arrogance with him. And arrogance does not fit the man. Man should be humble in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is this saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر That person who got an atom rate of arrogance in him is not going to enter into paradise. Now, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ asked this question that one of us wants to have nice clothes upon him, nice shoes for him. Is it arrogance? And the Prophet ﷺ said, that is not arrogance. Because, in Allah jameelun yuhibbul jamal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is beautiful and he likes the beauty. Al-kibru matharu al-haqqi wa ghamtu nas What is arrogance? That is, you deny the truth. And wa ghamtu nas And you see the people as uh, mean. You try to uh, hate them and uh, try to think that you are superior than them. This is wa ghamtu nas Not to give them their right. So, the lesson from this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Jabarut, the greatness only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as far as the man is, uh, is concerned, he should try always to be humble and this is how he could have the respect not only of the people, also the respect in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with this we come to the end of this episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah Rahman Rahim, Al Malik Al Qudus Al Salam, Al Mu'min Al Muhaymin Al Aziz Al Jabbar. الله الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز